Okay, everyone. Hello. Welcome to another uh, episode of Urban Grossing with Elizabeth. I'm going to gross in my home. Um, today, we're going to talk about prosection of testicular specimens. Um, the ones that we have, I think, are sheep testicles. Um, their anatomy is really similar, but the way that we receive these from the butcher, we uh, don't have any epididymis, and then we do not have our um, outermost layer, which would be our tunica vaginalis, which then um, would lead to our spermatic cord. So we just have our testicular parenchyma with its immediate um, intimate surface, which is this white outer surface, which is known as our tunica albuginea. So we're gonna make do with what we've got um, for prosecting testicles, just like any solid parenchymous organ, we're gonna start out by weighing it. Again, I don't have a scale in my home gross room, but um, that's what we would do. And then for measurements, um, we will do three dimensions, one, two, three. And then we would also do uh, 3D uh, measurements of our epididymis if we had it, and then length and diameter of our spermatic cord. Um, and then the first thing that we're going to do is ink the entire outer surface. Again, you would have your vaginalis. Ink wouldn't actually get on your tunica albuginea in a human intact specimen, but we're going to ink our entire outer surface black on this specimen. And again, these have been... Um, distorted by the butcher, um, obviously you wouldn't be able to see this bulging testicular parenchyma on a uh, normal testicular resection. But we're gonna ink both sides, all one color. We don't need to differentially ink. We would also ink um, up our spermatic cord as well if we had had that. Again, all one color. Um, just like with all margin, um, some places will have you ink your margin before you shave it just for embedding purposes. Okay, so we've inked our entire outer surface black. Now we're going to mordant it. And the ink um, sticks really well to your tunica vaginalis. Not so great to our tunica albuginea, but we're going to make do with what we've got. So um, in these specimens, we only have one true margin and that's our spermatic cord margin. So before we section through anything, we're gonna take a shave of that margin. Just make sure when you're shaving it um, that you visualize that your vas deferens has not retracted down into your spermatic cord. That happens sometimes. So you wanna make sure that you visualize the vas deferens so that it is included in your shave. You're then gonna submit that, usually in cassette A1. Then what we would do is we would have our spermatic cord coming out here. We would serially section through it to look for any tumor implants. And so our first cassette will be our spermatic cord margin and then cassettes A2 and 3 will be our mid spermatic cord and our peritesticular spermatic cord margins. But you can wait to take those until you've bivalved. So after you've taken your margin, serially section through your spermatic cord to look for any satellite nodules or direct invasion, we're going to palpate to find our epididymis because when we bivalve these specimens, we wanna bivalve toward the direction of our epididymis so that upon bivalving when our specimen is laying open, we'll be able to see relationship of the epididymis to our testicular parenchyma and our lesion. So for this one, because we don't have that, we're just going to bivalve. I have the tiniest little forceps in my at-home grossing kit. So medium blade, we're going to bivalve. The albuginia is kind of tough to get through, but you can see this is our testicular parenchyma. Again, your epididymis um, on a human specimen would be right here. And that way we could measure our relationships and then our spermatic cord would be coming up here. So we bivalve through our specimen. You can leave it attached, but you can see, I can see my albuginia in here. Um, these sheep testicles have um, white fibrous tissue in the medial aspect. You would not see that on a human, um, on a normal one. Obviously, if they have a history of crypt orchidism, anything like that, you can have additional 
um, fibrous tissue. So all we're gonna do for this is now, let's say in theory we have a lesion, we'll put a little lesion um, with some green ink here. So this would be on both sides. I'll hit this with a little mordant as well. So we would now describe our lesion. Uh, remember with mixed germ cell tumors, the cut surface can be incredibly variegated and different. So um, we're gonna describe our cut surface, any areas that look different, all the different colors. And then what we're going to do is um, you can take your distance or we can serially section through both of our halves first, just like you did on the kidney to um, appreciate the third dimension of the lesion. So we're gonna serially section through. Obviously on our um, normal testicles, uh, our lesion would have a depth, a third dimension. Sorry, not a depth, because this is a solid parenchymous organ, but we would take our third dimension by um, adding together the uh, third dimension from both halves. So serially section through both halves. We would measure our three dimensions of our lesion. We would take the distance to our uh, our uh, spermatic cord margin and then also to our epididymis. Other important relationships are lesion to tunica albuginea where it's closest. Remember that all the way down here, once we've completed our serial sections all the way through, there's tunica albuginea there. So make sure that that is not your closest measurement. Don't just take the ones that you can see here. Look at all of your slices to appreciate where is closest. So our important distances again, tunica albuginea, epididymis, spermatic cord margin, where our testicular parenchyma goes into our epididymis, because again, our epididymis will attach to our testicular parenchyma here, and then the tail will kind of wrap around. We have head, body, tail. Right here, where that little hilum is, is what's called our reedy testes. So we can also describe that distance. Um, a lot of times, unless a lesion is incredibly invasive, the tunica vaginalis, once you bivalve through your specimen, will completely peel away. So you won't necessarily be able to take a measurement of the closest distance. So in that case, I would say it, the lesion is blank centimeters from the tunica albuginea. The tunica vaginalis retracts away from the testicular parenchyma and there is no evidence of gross invasion. So uh, that's also in my sample dictation that I put on D2L for you guys. So we would take our representative sections, uh, lesion to albuginia, lesion to epididymis with reedy testes. Um, if you can do lesion to spermatic cord, because that's an important T stage measurement, um, then we'll include that as well. Again, you might have to more extensively test sample testicular lesions because um, they can be mixed germ cell tumors. And like we said in lecture, our lesions are staged and, um, not sorry, not staged, but the grade and the outcomes are usually determined by the most aggressive component. So like we discussed, choriocarcinoma is the most aggressive. It's usually gonna be more red tan and hemorrhagic. So we're gonna to wanna to sample all the areas that look different. So then the pathologist can render the diagnosis of percentage components of each of those mixed germ cell tumor components. So they could say it's 40% choriocarcinoma, 20% yolk sac tumor, and so on. Then again, on normal testicular parenchyma that's not fibrotic like this one, a normal testicular parenchyma, you'll kind of be able to tease up your seminiferous tubules. That's what we say when we're describing our uninvolved testicular parenchyma and we say the tubules string with ease. Here, the tubules are fibrotic, but you'll kind of tease them up with your forceps and usually you'll be able to string up those seminiferous tubules. So that's something important to note, whether they do or do not string with ease because that's usually evidence of fibrosis. So sample extensively all the areas that look different, show all of your important relationships. Then we're also gonna sample um, uninvolved normal testicular parenchyma, uninvolved epididymis, 
And then for our spermatic cord, we're going to do the peritesticular spermatic cord, the mid spermatic cord, and a shave of our spermatic cord margin. Okay, so if you guys have any questions, just shoot us an email and let us know. But testicular um, grossing, pretty straightforward, uh, not too dissimilar from the kidney. All right, thanks guys.